why is it that Republican states tend to have the least sincere Republican? Like Dan Crenshaw, apparently still a member of Congress. That's what Republicans do. Republicans do nothing. Republicans have been in charge for I don't know how long of managing the decline. I mean, look, look, it's it's not exactly a new insult to call the Republican Party controlled opposition. The Dakotas are so red, it's crazy. They could have somebody to the right of me if they wanted to, but they don't. Well, I saw him on Fox last night. Oh, just gag me with a fork. It was a complicated process and uh, I think very, uh, it's not, uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do. What's going on, everybody? I'm excited for today's episode. I got about 10 clips, and I get excited when I see Republican media hosts telling the truth, the real truth that most people won't tell you. And I'm super pumped because I saw Jesse Kelly's segment on Tucker Carlson's show, and I thought it was fantastic. He called out Republicans in red states, not just blue states, for hiring horrible Republicans. He said that he thinks the Republican Party's controlled opposition, and him and Tucker went so far as to say that even Donald Trump fell short. And I love when they put pressure on Trump and the Republican Party, because that's the only way we're ever going to win if it truly is controlled opposition. Let's look at it. I got 10 clips. Give me a thumbs up in the comment if everything sounds good. Dream Rare Podcast. I have a great show in store for you today. I'm pumped. Hopefully you are too. It's the Dream Rare Podcast, welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. What's going on, everybody? We got Wilmar, Dan, Bogdan, David, Calypso. We got Marla. Appreciate y'all. Everything looks good. I'm not going to read comments. If you want me to read a super chat, you got to wait till the end because I got a lot of clips and I got to focus. Also, I have a confession. You know, I quit coffee for a while. I was just drinking lattes. I was like, you know, I was I was getting a little too addicted to caffeine, drinking it twice a day, way too much coffee, not drinking enough water. I switched to lattes and I'm back on the coffee and it feels good. It's like a crackhead when he stops smoking crack and then he starts again. And, it, and it's like it's like doing it that first time. That's a bad example. Think of another drug. But anyway, I've never done crack. I'm just saying it. I imagine that you get it. I'm sorry. I, I'm talking too much. But long story short, I'm back off the coffee. And like for a while, I didn't even feel it. You know, I'm like just drinking so much caffeine. Now I'm just I'm pumped up. It's like my second day back on on that E. That's short for coffee. Anyway, it's enough of that. Um, Let's get into the segments. I got about 10, 11, 12 clips, most of which I agree with a few. I disagree, but that's OK. That's healthy in a fake democracy republic or whatever they call it. Let's get into the clips. Uh. Jesse Kelly goes off on Tucker Carlson and says, the Republican Party, they do nothing. That's their job. They're controlled opposition. Strong agree. Let's look. That it's already being destroyed. It just looks dirtier than it did two years ago, because it is. So why has he done nothing? Like, what's his excuse? He's a Republican. That's what Republicans do. Republicans do nothing. Republicans have been in charge for I don't know how long of managing the decline. I mean, look, look, it's it's not exactly a new insult to call the Republican Party controlled opposition. But let's right. be frank. That's exactly what. That's right. I agree. I'm going to play more clips and then I want to react to what Tucker said and what Jesse said. But let's play the two clips that connect to that. I got to chop them into short ones or else sometimes I get copyright strikes. Even right. Joseph Stalin allowed an opposition party. A lot of people don't realize this. He allowed, encouraged, and in fact funded an opposition party to give the people of the Soviet Union an illusion of choice. Oh, no, no, these guys are against me. Wow, it's pretty scary. But somehow they never end up accomplishing any of their anti-Stalin. Thank you, Jesse Kelly. I haven't heard. I'm sure there's people out there saying it in a lot of great channels and podcasts you guys probably listen to. But as far as things that cross my threshold, I haven't heard anybody say that in a long time that gets, you know, Tucker Carlson type interviews where it's like, yeah, you know, this idea of controlled opposition. I know it sounds so scary, but so many regimes, including the communists, have done it because if people know that there's no real opposition, then people create an opposition. If they know that their parties are both fake, then they do something about it. And I'm not saying 1776, go up in arms and get trapped by the feds. I'm just talking about situational awareness. Like you're not going to put so much money and en energy into a person that isn't really on your side. So then you start investing your energy into things that matter, like yourself, your career, your family, or 
a political party that actually doesn't hate you. So that's why controlled opposition is so Im important to understand. I want to play that clip again. I know I probably shouldn't because I just played it, but that 30 seconds right there or 15 seconds, whatever it is, is the exact concept that people need to understand. This always happens in tyrannical governments. And in America, Mike Johnson and Nancy Pelosi, there's virtually no difference. Like they're going to give $100 billion. They're going to spy on you. He's apparently spending more money on his omnibus bills than even Pelosi did. They're not even economically conservative at all. They're borderline communist in the Republican Party. And people don't want to face it because they think that Donald Trump's going to come wipe their poo poo butt. It's like, understand this concept. God bless you guys. I'm not trying to be condescending because I know a lot of people here get it. We got a smart crowd. But there's some not so smart people in the crowd. Let's be honest. It's like a concert and everyone's acting right and one person gets drunk. We're not they're not all winners here. But uh, in general, like this concept is so important. I don't understand why Republicans don't want to face it. Even right. Joseph Stalin allowed an opposition party. A lot of people don't realize this. He allowed, encouraged and in fact, funded an opposition party to give the people of the Soviet Union an illusion of choice. Oh, no, no. These guys are against me. Wow. It's pretty scary. But somehow they never end up accomplishing any of their anti-Stalin goals. Oh, we got to fight the communists, folks, and we got to save the economy by blowing up the economy, printing trillions of dollars, and then running around selling pharmaceutical vaccines like Bill Gates on steroids. Whoa, that was just a mistake. I didn't know. I trusted the wrong advisor. Oh, trust the plan. Oh, my gosh. Let's listen to one more clip. <laughs> We're constantly told the Republican Party is going to fight for us and protect the border and, and we'll cut your taxes and, and we're, we'll be pro-life and, and we'll protect the family. Yet none of these things ever seem to materialize. They all talk about it during election season. I'll build the wall. And then you get there and you get 25 feet of wall and a bunch of excuses. Greg Abbott, if, look, that's his excuse. He's a Republican. That's what they all are. That's why I'm an anti communist all right, so I want to say this real quick, because the first thing Tucker was talking about, I don't have the whole interview, but I suggest you go watch it on Tucker Carlson's Networkers Twitter. It's a great watch, 20 minutes. It's very fantastic. Uh, with that being said, Tucker was talking about him going to Texas recently and seeing how dirty it's become. Don't get mad at me because I'm not a you know liberal state supremacist or whatever you want to say, like because I live in California that I think it's so much better. But what I will say is anytime I talk to Republicans out of state, they always say like, oh, I live in a red state. How do you live in a blue state? And it's like, listen, I've been to Dallas. I've been to Austin. I've never been to Houston. I don't want to go. You know, like it's not like all of uh, red states are thriving. And I don't say this from competition from a blue state. I'm just being honest. I know people that I was friends with in conservative media, they got a job in Fort Worth and they're like, oh, Fort Worth is the more conservative area of Dallas. Both of them got their car Cadillac converter con jacked from them in Fort Worth. So they were getting robbed in Texas. You know, the Texas cities are getting crappier. Austin's getting dirtier and more disgusting. I'm not blaming all Republicans for that. But this idea that because I live in a Republican state that my state's protected from all this degeneracy, it's simply not true. And with demographic shift, which you're not supposed to talk about, uh, you know, Texas went from a solid red state to almost a swing state, and it's eventually going to go blue just based off of math and statistics, which are, of course, deemed racist. But it's like, you know, I like that he's talking about that because when I, I've traveled the country, not everywhere, but, you know, I've been South Dakota was nice. I've been to like really cool places. But even in the cities in the blue areas, it's not like perfect. Sometimes it's good. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of trash and crime in, in, in the cities and in, in red states as well. And I'm not saying that uh, it's your fault, but as the governor of Texas, it is worth paying attention to. But as Jesse and Tucker were suggesting, you know, are they even trying? And this is before I play the next clips. This is the question that a lot of people ask themselves in the Republican Party. They don't want to believe that somebody like Donald Trump isn't trying, so they have to justify every move. It's not that he sold out to the donors. It's that he made a mistake. It's not that, you know, Fauci tricked him or, you know, it is that Fauci tricked him. It's not that he sold out to the pharmaceutical industry. When you look at reality, it seems like the Republican Party's just selling you out and, you know, working for the donors. But for some people, that's too hard to believe. So they're like, no, 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 no. They're trying. They just keep falling short. And it's like, I don't believe that. I agree with what Jesse Kelly's saying. Obviously, I think they're completely controlled opposition. And I think that the solution to this issue is knowing that it's happening. If everybody acted this way and called it out, they wouldn't be able to do it. But they constantly are like, look at the left. Oh, we got to pass a law for a safe space. That's how they get you. Anyway, I like the fact that Tucker 
and Jesse Kelly, they went in on Trump a little bit too. And they said, not only did he not really build a secure border, but also he switched his policy at the border. And I have a lot to say about this because it did happen. When the media pressures Trump or Democrats pressure Trump, whether it's on bump stocks or the border, he always flops like a New York Democrat and caves for them and they still hate him. If he wins again, make sure as a fan or a voter, don't let him cave on every policy because then there's no point. Insult or don't insult. I don't give a crap if people are. A Sorry, I don't think that's the right one. Let me see. One, two, three. I think this is it. My bad. Yeah. And let's just be honest. I mean, obviously, I'm fervently rooting for Trump over Biden for many, many reasons. But Trump was president for four years and he didn't he didn't even build a defensive border wall. D didn't. And I don't care. We can lie about that. But that's just a fact. So the idea that he's going to deport 10 million people is just don't 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 lie to me. I'm so Dude, this interview is speaking to my soul. It's just like, that's how I feel. It's nice to see people that obviously agree with you. It's not like I need to hear someone who agrees with me. I just like honest people. I can't take fakeness from the left or right. So with him, he's like, stop lying to me. Stop acting like Republicans are going to fix this problem. They're not. I'm, I'm sick of being lied to. I was like, I, I definitely feel that from Tucker. You know, that's that's relatable. Hashtag relatable. Hashtag selfie. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm trying to be funny. Anyway, let's listen to the second part of that clip. Jesse goes off. So I agree. Yeah, with you completely. look, I mean, not not to interrupt, but along those along those same lines, Tucker. Sorry, but uh, people have to do also remember. Remember child separation policy. Very That's well. a basic border policy because people grab kids who aren't theirs and act like, "Hey, I'm Dad Pedro," and when really he's not. He's some kind of cartel member. And so you always separate the kid and figure out is he there with mom or dad. That was that's a basic border policy. Look again. You know, Jesse's bracing because when you tell the truth to conservatives, not all the time, because sometimes they like the truth. But when the truth involves their idol and their fake savior and the controlled opposition people that they think are saving them, then they get really bothered. So trigger warning, safe space warning. Everybody get your, you know, get your blankets, put them over your head just in case. Uh, Jesse Kelly's going to tell the truth about how Trump flopped to the Democratic media and switched his border policy based off of pressure. Insult or don't insult. I don't give a crap if people are offended by it. The Trump administration ended that policy because of media and Democrat pressure. Course, Democrats aware. did a bunch of photo ops down on the border. AOC's crying at the fence. Eventually, child separation was ended. That's because of media pressure. And people in this country honestly believe there's going to be some mass deportation of 8 million people where you're rounding up entire families and shipping them back to Zimbabwe. You're outside of your mind. It'll never happen. The people have no stomach for it. And neither does the Republican Party. A lot of things I want to say, but I want to start with this concept of I realize that Democrats and a lot of Republicans, too, they do things that are unconstitutional. I'm just going to go through a few. They're infringing on the Fourth Amendment with warrantless spying of Americans, but the Supreme Court doesn't seem to care. They infringed on the bump stock under Trump. He actually infringes on the Second Amendment somehow more than liberal presidents sometimes, but nobody seems to notice. The Supreme Court is working right now to overturn that because it's unconstitutional. But if you do things that are wrong and against the courts, it seems like sometimes they don't care. And other times it takes them four to eight years to fix the problem. So with mandates and lockdowns, how constitutional are these things? We'll never find out because by the time the Supreme Court gets to them, it's already too late. So it seems like that's the Democrat method is they just do stuff, whether it's right or not. The Republicans have no answer to it. So, you know, on that note that he was saying of like, do you think that Dem Republicans are going to deport everybody? My thought, like one of the only reasons I want to vote for Trump, I think there's should be a lot of reasons, but I don't really think he's real opposition. So the one reason that's probably most important to me that I think that Trump is different than Biden is the border. I think Trump will flip the border policy. I think that he'll do a better job than Biden. But the problem is Biden lowered the bar so low. They've done such a piss poor job at the border. Anything is better than that. But anything isn't really going to fix our country like it needs to be actually a good job. But that's I agree with them on that. It's like, is Trump going to be able to round up 10 million illegal immigrants and send them back to 100 countries? Almost definitely not. And as Jesse talks about later, their kids are going to be U.S. citizens. And that's what the Democrats do. They just flood the system. And then Republicans come in and do a half ass job. And then the media says they're bad. And then they flip their policy. And that's why they're controlled opposition. They have no strategy or plan to fix this stuff. But for some reason, I'm not trying to be rude, but maybe I kind of am to wake people up. 
grown Republican men act like little girls. And when you tell them this stuff, they're like, well, I want to believe that Donald Trump's going to fix all my problems. It's like, cause you're pathetic. Like, I understand why women do that. I think they're attracted to Trump and they, you know, they, they think he's like a man that maybe their husband aren't or that no man in their life is as big of a man as Trump. So they look up to him like a man, you know, but like, why do grown men in their forties and fifties, like fantasize over Trump, like a drunk, you know, Taylor Swift fan at a concert singing, you know, shake, shake it off, uh, uh, shake it off. Like, it's like, what is the benefit of you lying to you? Like, you really think that he's got a secret mission that he, I mean, hopefully he does deport some people, but it's going to be really difficult to do so. I hope he does, but I just don't see it happening. So we'll see. I, I got a few more clips to play, but that was them explaining one, two, three, one, two, three. So I just got to find out where I am. They're like, you know, Trump really didn't fix the border. It's just he's better than Biden. It's like Biden sucks. It's wide open with Trump. It'll sort of be closed maybe, and maybe he'll do the policy and then flip it when the media calls him bad and he's pro Second Amendment until a shooting happens and then he bans bump stocks and he's pro economy until a lockdown happens and then it's 15 days to slow the spread and he's against socialism until he's not. You know, someone said today that he was against a hundred billion dollars in foreign aid, but you know, when he's president, he'll sign it. But then he's also against the FISA warrant spying. But like when he was president, he signed it. It's the same thing all politicians do. They say this, they say that, they please this person, they please that, and then they just do what's always done. Um, this one is is a really funny clip, in my opinion. Jesse Kelly's going off, and this is important because in a red state, especially if you're in a red state, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, parts of Texas, if your county's super red, you have every reason above everybody in the country to elect the most conservative Republican. You have the votes, you have the people, you have the politics. So he asked the question, and Tucker's been asking the question, why are some of the Republicans in red counties and red states some of the worst Republicans in the country? And Jesse Kelly speaks to my soul here just going off about it. It's pretty funny. These are the weapons grade losers who control the GOP and they're from the reddest states. It's under Susan Collins is understandable, Tucker. Sorry yeah. to get all fired up. It's understandable. She's from Maine. It's from a blue state. Of course, we're going to get some wishy-washy, mealy mouth dork from that kind of state. But the Dakotas? The Dakotas are so red, it's crazy. They could have somebody to the right of me if they wanted to, but they don't. Well, I saw him on Fox last night. I'll oh, just gag me with a fork. <laughs> I love that clip. The longer one's even funnier, but it's so true. And I'm not, it's not a competition. Like, yes, yeah, San Francisco sucks. Los Angeles sucks. Austin, Texas also kind of sucks in my opinion, but state taxes suck. I'm not trying to act like Democrats are good. They suck. Democrat governors are terrible. But if you live in a red state, in a red county with like 60 to 90% Republicans in your county, why aren't you electing the most conservative Republicans? Why are you guys getting scammed? <laughs> like Lindsey Graham, I know South Carolina isn't completely red, but it's like, why is Lindsey Graham winning in that state? Why is Dan Crenshaw winning? Like, who are these people? But it's because all you have to do to trick a Republican, especially the boomers that are squandering their red states and turning them into blue states, they they can't see past like a Trump with a cowboy hat or like Lindsey Graham on Fox News or like Dan Crenshaw with the eye patch. It's like that's all you have to do to trick these people. And then they elect these horrific Republicans and they don't even realize that they're doing it. You know, Tucker asked the question about Dan Crenshaw. Everybody knows Dan Crenshaw's a phony. Everybody. Yet not the county he's a part of. They can't replace him with a better Republican. The whole world knows he's a phony, except for, I guess, Joe Rogan has him on all the time. Or I don't, I don't know who's telling you that this guy's not a phony. Everyone knows. Every like high-level Republican account that I follow, even the dumbest ones know that Dan Crenshaw's a fraud. The whole world knows that, except for his district. They apparently think he's a cowboy patriot that's fighting for their freedom. Uh, even Tucker knows. Why is it that Republican states tend to have the least sincere Republican? Like Dan Crenshaw, apparently still a member of Congress from the state of Texas, who is zero interest in the U.S. border. All his interest is in the Ukrainian border, the Gaza border. You know, how does a guy like that get elected in a supposedly Republican state? Not trying to point fingers, but it's like anytime I talk about this stuff, people are like, oh, 
how do you live in California? We live in Texas, the state that almost elected Beto O'Rourke, the state that went from like 30% Republican victories to 4% margins, the state that elected Dan Crenshaw, the state that is letting Austin, Texas fall apart, the state that let Dallas and Houston go from Republican cities to Democrat cities, the state that my friends moved to, to the nice area of Fort Worth and got their cars jacked and their Cadillac converters stolen. I'm not saying that great, like, blue states are good. They're not. They're tor they're horribly run. The cities are trash, but it's about community and localization. And also, it's like if you ignore all these problems and vote for Dan Crenshaw and watch Fox News and put on a Trump hat, you're just as responsible for the collapse of the country as a liberal. You're buying into the false opposition. And it's not to say to be hopeless. It's not hopeless to look at reality like hopeless is ignoring basic math and demographics and science and history and reality. And then your kids grow up in a country that's a shithole and you're like, why did that happen? Well, yeah, of course, it was partially the left and the Democrats. But if Joe Biden brings over 10 million people and Donald Trump deports under a million, do the math. 10 million minus a million is 9 million. That means Democrats got 9 million people here that weren't citizens, you know, and that's the that's like the math of the Republican Party. It's like Democrats do 50 messed up things. Republicans take back two and then they do 20 messed up things and then tell you that they're not doing them. People like Mike Johnson, he's really not better than Nancy Pelosi. Like in some ways, I, I guess he's obviously better than Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, in my opinion, is, is a witch. But in general, can I say that or is that hate speech now calling people witches? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, like Mike Johnson's horrible. Horrible. And this is what Trump has to say about Mike Johnson. I'm skipping around, but I can't help myself. Mike Johnson, the guy who spends more money than Pelosi on an omnibus, sells out our domestic warrantless spying so they could spy on U.S. citizens that are innocent and, and wants to pass $100 billion in foreign aid. This is the opposition leader that's supposed to be fighting the rhinos. We're getting along very well with the speaker, and I get along very well with Marjorie. Uh, we have a speaker. Uh, he was voted in, and it was a complicated process, and uh, I think very, uh, it's not, uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do, and uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. She's a very good friend of mine, and I know she has a lot of respect for the speaker. He's doing about as good as you can do. That's that's Trump's role is no offense. I like Marjorie Taylor Greene. I've met her, but I believe Trump looks at Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and people like Matt Getz as dumb little dogs. And it's like the second the dumb little dogs are like Mike Johnson's corrupt and he's selling out the country. Trump goes, I like you, Marjorie, but he's doing a really good job. OK, he's doing the best he could do. He's doing the best. OK. And then and then it's like, bark, 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 bark. He's there to, to silence the actual opposition in the Republican Party that would do something about it and basically tell you to shut up and, and treat you like an animal. And then most of them bark because that's what they do. And, uh, you know, if this is the best we can do, Thomas Massey points it out, Speaker Johnson has an omnibus that spends more than Pelosi's highest year. He spends more than Pelosi. Expansion of domestic warrantless surveillance program. And this week he's pushing a Chuck Schumer dream bill which contains $100 billion of foreign aid, mostly for war. And this person, Natalia, on Twitter said, we can vote our way out of this. Wait till next election. And for those listening just on audio, it's a picture of Patrick Starr with a, a uh, board or a plank bolted to his head trying to walk through a door. And, and the plank keeps hitting the door because it's like he doesn't fit, but he doesn't get it. So he keeps walking in with the sideways plank on his head over and over and over and over again. And that's Republican voters until they wake up to the reality. If a good job is worse than Nancy Pelosi, it's not a maybe, it's a definitely. The Republican Party is controlled opposition. They're not even pretending to try. They just have Donald Trump, the vaccine circus clown, ringleadering all the real opposition to make them be fake opposition. Like, come down, Marjorie. I know that Speaker Johnson's doing just as bad as Pelosi, but he's doing a good job. He's a friend of mine. Yeah, I get it. I know what's going on. Trump and Mike Johnson are, are controlled by the same people. Trump and Mike Johnson are controlled by the same donors. So, of course, he's doing a good job if your job is to sell out America and pass domestic spying bills. But if you care about America, then he's not doing a good job. But, but what people don't realize is the people that they're working for and the donors that they're working for, 
They're not trying to do what you want them to do. They get people like that. Politicians are professional middlemen. You get these guys to talk to this, talk to that, say this, say that, wear a cowboy hat, hug an American flag, and get all the dingbats in the audience to think that they stand for you. Well, follow the evidence. It's so obvious. But anyway, real quick, one, two, three, four, five. I want to play these clips because um, Jesse Kelly said some really interesting stuff about Joe Biden importing hundred. I'm sorry, tens of millions or millions of illegal immigrants, and how the Republican Party. There's no way that they're going to deport all these people because I know the dream of most Republicans, not all, but most, they're like, oh, Trump's going to get in and he's going to deport all of these people that Joe Biden's importing. I don't see it happening. I mean, that would be interesting, but I don't think they have the capabilities or the balls or the desire to do that. So I agree with his take here. The country is being undone now and it cannot be reversed what's happening right now. I want to be, I want everyone to understand this. Let's say everyone gets uh, their wish and Donald Trump beats Joe Biden in November and woohoo! You cannot possibly, it's not humanly possible to deport this many people. If Joe Biden's going to bring in 10, 12 million people, almost all of them will be here permanently and all of their children will be American citizens. People will be like, oh no, that's that's hate speech. You're, you're just being hateful. You just hate Donald Trump. You just hate Trump. It's so hateful when you tell me things like that. It's like, yeah, that's like someone telling you that Reagan doing amnesty was going to turn California blue forever, which happened, by the way. And you're like, yo, if Reagan does that, California is going to be blue for, for the next 50 years, which it has been. And they're going to be like, oh, no, you're just being hateful. I like him. Of course you like him. He's an actor. He's good at acting. Donald Trump's a cool guy. He's good at being cool. I don't want to hear that. It's not my whole my whole dreams. I'm gonna sit down and uh, imagine Donald Trump coming to my house dressed as Rambo and saying, "It's time to trust the plan." It's like grow up. How is that hopeful? That's like embarrassing. It's like you know, it's like someone in a furry costume where it's like they're not showing up to work, they're not paying rent, they're doing drugs, they have no money, they're about to get kicked out. And they're going to furry conventions to dress up as an animal all furry and make love to people. And you're like, yo, maybe it's time to like stop doing that and like, you know, do something so, so you don't get kicked out of your apartment. And they're like, oh, you just have no hope. You have no hope. It's like, no, I'm just not like that's all, you know, is cosplaying, fantasizing like there's never a moment to, to live in reality now. Anyway, uh, here's the next clip. Hopefully. Wait, no, no, no. Is this it? And there's not going to be some mass deportation, no matter what people say on the campaign trail. The American people have no stomach for that whatsoever. Even if they think they do right now, it would be one video of, of a little of a little boy crying as mommy gets thrown in the back of a paddy wagon to be. Yeah, before I play the next clip, I saw this interview. He was the Department of Homeland Security deputy secretary or, or like the basically vice president to whoever was the secretary uh, of Homeland Security. You know, the people that are in charge of all that stuff. And he said he was there during Trump. He said, you know, it, it actually was Donald Trump himself who told us to call off deportations. Like Trump would hit up the people that were deporting illegals and be like, stop doing that. It, like, it doesn't look good for me. Trump is a New York Democrat liberal who is so vain and so arrogant that he cares more about what liberal billionaires think about him than what his own base thinks about him. Cause he knows you guys are pathetic and you'll just like lick the dirt off his shoes and say, it's Willy Wonka secret chocolate. So he doesn't respect you. It's like the whole time he's in office, he's trying to please big pharma. He's trying to please Bill Gates. He's trying to please his liberal friends. They say something mean about him in the news. He calls off deportations because he doesn't want to look mean. And it's like, that's the guy that's going to deport 10 million people. The guy that couldn't even deport 200,000 without feeling bad about it. It's like, it's nice to be nice, but he's just not that guy. Like, let's just stop pretending. Or we could pretend maybe I'll dress up in a little furry outfit and be like, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll join along. That should be fun. And all deportations would stop. Republicans would grab their ankles for the media like they always do and everything. Well, we need to do this more humanely. So that's the situation we're in. Well, where does that leave us? Where it leaves us is you can decide to challenge the federal government at a state level or you can lose your country. 
There is no third direction. Illegal immigration on this level will sink America in the same way. It doesn't matter how big or powerful a boat is. If it takes on enough water, it will go down to the bottom of the ocean. So Jesse's theory, I listened to the whole thing, is like you got to do it on a state level. And he made some interesting, compelling arguments. He said when Democrats want to do something on a state level, like think about all the stuff they did during lockdowns. They did so many things that aren't technically constitutional. They're not democratic. They just straight tyrannical for the they, they use tyranny for the wrong reason. It's like Republicans will be communist, socialist, fascist and authoritarians when it comes to pharmaceuticals and lockdowns. But as soon as it, it, it it's like use your power to do the right thing, all of a sudden Republicans are, are Ron Paul. They're such frauds. They're Ron Paul. They're anarchists. They're libertarians when it comes to doing the right thing. But they're communists, socialists and fascists and authoritarians when it comes to doing the wrong thing. They're like, I have no problem. 15 days to slow the spread is not a constitutional thing. Getting all the governors to do this and declare emergencies, that's not in the constitution. Even Sweden stayed open. Sweden's constitution said that they couldn't do that. And Sweden stayed open. And Donald controlled opposition Bolshevik Trump told Sweden to lock down. That's Trump's role. It's like if a European country stays open, Trump's like, shut down. You know, if Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to do the right thing, Trump says, sit down, dog. You know, not literally, but it's just like that's his role is to push the opposition back down to not do anything. Like, it's just like, trust my plan of selling you out. How about not?